Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing stories like these every day, and still it's so, so moving. So uh, my name is Alon. I'm 24 years old. I'm from Haifa. I won't repeat what Elad said because I think he explained it really well. But the festival we went, we attended to, it's a festival that was uh, about celebrating joy and very colorful and people from all over Israel and the world. And everybody just came to celebrate and enjoy. So my personal experience started at uh, around 6.30 a.m. It was actually 6.29 a.m. exactly. I remember looking at my watch when the producers of the festival went on stage uh, telling that there are missiles, that, that there are rockets launched from Gaza into Israel. So we should all uh, lay down on the floor, put, put our hands above our head and uh, wait a while until it will pass. It was enough just to look at the sky. You could see uh, the tens of rockets being launched and you could see the, the iron drone exploding some of them while being in the air so they won't explode in Israel territory. So yeah, you could see the sky actually with the red colors. So after a while, while everybody was laying down on the floor, we understood that it won't stop anytime soon. So the producers asked us to pack all of our stuff and uh, go as quickly as possible back home. So uh, my friend and I, that uh, we came together with his car, we immediately went to the, pay, uh, to the, to the area where, uh, where we had our tent and all of our uh, belongings. We packed everything. We said goodbye to all of our friends that we met at the festival. And uh, we went towards the car. Uh, it took us a few moments to find the car because uh, there was a little bit of panic in the air, but we need to remember that sadly it's not the first time that uh, Israel is, that Gaza and that Hamas terrorists are launching, uh, launching rockets on Israel. So everybody at the festival was quite aware of uh, what you should do when something like this happened, like, like this happened. And uh, so there was panic. There was panic on the scene, but people managed it quite well. So me and my friend entering the car, uh, we started driving towards the exit of the parking. As Elad said, there was a, a small jam, like everybody was trying to get out. And uh, after uh, 10, 15 minutes that we arrived to, to the main road to exit the festival, you could turn either right towards the south of Israel, uh, or you could take a left towards the north of Israel. Uh, since we are living in Haifa, we took left, and there was a big line of cars that was formed. Uh, everybody was trying to escape. And uh, we started driving slowly, all the line of the cars. And about three, four minutes later, we're seeing all the cars that was in front of us doing a, a big U-turn and going back towards uh, the festival. So everybody was es escaping uh, something. We didn't understand what, but everybody was doing a U-turn and going back towards the festival, which made no sense. So uh, we arrived at the situation that we were the first car in the line because everybody uh, in front of us went back. And uh, we stopped and we, lo we looked in front of us and maybe 200 meters in front of us, we could see uh, cars on the sides of the, on, of the, side, on the, side of, uh, the road. So uh, I took my, my head out of the window. I was looking, I was trying to search for why nobody was driving this road and what happened. And I didn't see anything. So I told my friend, like, I think it's the police that, that stopped that block the, the road because maybe a rocket uh, had fallen and there was an explosion or something, but it must be the army or it must be the police that, that are blocking the road. And that's why everybody went back. So we thought, okay, so we, this is the way home. This is the way we will take. And if it's the police, we would just find a new way to go back home. Uh, Never would I would I thought that I would see the, the scene that I'm about to share with you. 
so we started driving and I look to my right and I can see three police officers with their guns held in their hands, walking shoulder to shoulder, just besides the, the road, uh, 15 meters away from the car. And they were close, like walking to, towards something. And then I look forward and I can see 30 meters away from the police officer, officers. You could see a minivan and uh, at least one Hamas terrorist that I saw with a big machine gun aiming at the police officers. And there was a, a, a gunshot starting between them. So I, I immediate, immediately shouted at my, at my friend, uh, put your head down, put your head down. I can see a Hamas terrorist and drive as fast as you can. So immediately he drives like a crazy. We put our head down and we pass this scene. As we're passing by, I could see all the cars on the sides of the walk that I saw when we stopped before on the road. All these cars, the windows were broken. There was blood on the, on the road, which I later understood that just a few moments before we passed, uh, this Hamas terrorist was on the road, firing at every car that was coming, firing at every person that was coming. And it was, it was, that was the reason that everybody went the other way in panic. So really these three police officers, which I don't even know if they're dead or alive, I probably assume that they are dead, but really they took all the attention from us. And I think they, they, they saved our, our lives. They saved our lives. And so as we, we are driving, uh, I'm like full of adrenaline. I'm telling my friend, yeah, we saw, I saw, we saw a Hamas terrorist. We, we didn't understand what was happening uh, and we're driving. And uh, 20 minutes later, uh, there was a rocket falling uh, 50 meters away from the car. The car was shaking. The windows broke a little bit inside the car. There was a big cloud of, uh, of uh, dark smoke, black smoke. So uh, we stopped uh, maybe one kilometer away under a bridge to take cover. We waited for maybe half an hour. So all the missiles uh, passed because it was really, there was rockets flying everywhere. And then we, we, we returned home. We returned safely home, uh, unhurt. And immediately starting, uh, I went to my friend's house. We sat with his family immediately opening the news, starting to understand what was happening and calling all of our friends that were at the festival, trying to, to, to see if they came back safely home and to try and understand what they saw. And suddenly you've got your close friends that, that you were with in the festival that are not picking up and immediately you fear the worst. And some are picking up and telling us we can't speak because we are hiding. and. Uh, they brought this word twice. Uh, they said the Holocaust, like it seems that you would imagine 70 years ago, but not in 2023, that people are running in the forest and hiding and they can't speak in the phone. They can't make a noise because there are terrorists that are walking just beside them and gunshots firing every, everywhere. And we could actually hear it from a phone call we did to our friend uh maybe one hour later uh we still we after we we were speaking with our friends we were checking the news everything's happening really fast and we we see the first photo that the uh, hamas posted one of the first photos that hamas posted because i don't know how it's even possible but the pride of hamas is posting and sharing all the horrors that they are doing all this, this terrifying stuff that they are doing, they're, they're all posting it on social media. So we, we see one of the posts that Hamas put, it's a photo of uh, somebody me and my friend knew that was killed. And this is how we discovered about the first person that died that we knew. And uh, yeah, so it was a, a complete panic uh, and more and more videos that are coming. And I know a few friends that were killed uh, that I'm going, I, I attended their funeral and a few like me that came back safely at home. Uh, and I can tell you it's been a, 
a few days now that each morning I wake up and the first thing I do is I open the news and I'm checking if I know somebody that was killed during the night, maybe a soldier that was fighting with me years ago, or maybe they discovered a new body of one of the people I knew at the festival. And each morning it's the same thing, checking for people that you know that were killed, that were slaughtered. And yeah, so this is the, the image. This is what I experienced in this Nova festival. And uh, yeah, this is my story, difficult days.